mate. Yeah, nice to see you. Hello. Critic, Sarah Safa, as you know. Hello, Hi, love. Sarah. Hi. I had no idea you were coming. I phoned you and you didn't get back. OK, look, we've been reviewed on table four. I need you to switch on, yeah? Yes, yes chef. Look, mate, I'm not being funny, not more. What's this all about? You haven't returned a call to me in six weeks. This is about you taking two hundred thousand pounds. Okay, so first of all, congratulations on the uh, the movie and congratulations on the recent uh, Biffer Awards. Thank, Thank you, you so much, good, man. Yeah. Good. I think you got four four movies four movies four awards for the movie, now. Yeah, yeah, we brought home four. Yeah, we, we were nominated for eleven and we got we got four. It was uh, an incredible night. Yeah, really oh, special yeah, night. Yeah. So the first thing I want to ask you about the film, of course, is um, it all I think it all stemmed from the the short, but that. Sure, actually stem from you kind of laying down the gauntlet for yourself to find yourself an agent. Is that true? Yeah, well, so <clears throat> I'd, um, I'd been an actor for 25 years and I'd wanted to direct something for a long, long time, but never really had the confidence to do it, you know, because I'd always put directors in this sort of like a special category where they were educated and knew everything about film and, you know, knew every actor and every, you know, they were basically, uh, you know, they'd gone to film school for three or four years. And, you know, I just thought that was the, the only way of doing it, really. And I, I just thought, you know, I'm not, um, I just didn't have the confidence anyway. So my mum uh, passed away five years ago, quite suddenly. And it was, it was, um, you know, horrific for us, but like, that was something that, really gave me the the sort of um the kick up the backside really if you like to just go do you know what what am i even waiting for let's just give it a go and see what happens what's the worst that can happen you know mm -hmm. and 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 honestly it was just a different, completely new lease of life and and so <clears throat> i sort of thought let me go let me give it a go and see if you know see if i like it for one and you know see if i can do it and whatnot so i made a short um uh called seconds out which is a about a young boxer <clears throat> suffering with um uh, mental health issues and and it was a beautiful script that was written by a friend of mine and so I, I directed that and I actually asked Stephen Graham if he'd be in it because I know Stephen he's a good mate of mine <clears throat> I asked him if he'd be in it and he sort of just said to me let's get the first one out of the way see how you get on <laughs> and then uh, and then we'll go from there and I was like oh, yeah all right fair enough fair enough so so I did the, the first one and, and he, I showed him it and he loved it and he said, what, so what are your plans now? I mean, I was like, well, to be honest, you know, I feel like I want, to, I want this to be my career now because, you know, I've been so, uh, you know, I've, I've been, for, you know, sort of holding back, but it's always been a, a huge passion of mine. I wanted to make movies for many years, you know. Um, and so now I just want to do this as a career. And, you know, I think I feel like my acting, my, you know, 25 years on, on sets and being in, in, that, in that industry as an actor, was my sort of training really and you know that was that was me learning you know about the about the business and about, about how it all works so I feel like you know I wanted I wanted to pursue it so I just said to Stephen look I want to I've got this other idea for this other movie because while I was acting um you know towards sort of like I, I, I was quite successful at the beginning uh, and then I got a little bit complacent because I thought you know I'm just going to walk into any audition here and get the job because that's what had happened so far but that is not the case, really. You need to put the work in and you need because there's a, a you know a bunch of people behind you in the queue who have put the work in and they're just waiting for you to just fail, yeah. basically. And more so today with YouTube and stuff, it's like there's so many yeah. people trying to get in on the market now. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So so you know, I sort of I sort of um uh, you know, I, I was it was a detriment to myself really in in in, in you know a, my acting career wasn't going as well as I'd hoped to be. And, and then I became a bit bitter and I was like blaming everything else and blaming everyone else and being like, Oh, you know, why is he on that role? I was, I auditioned for that. Why aren't I getting the auditions and blah, blah, blah. And it was all negative energy that I was putting out there basically. So I needed to make some money during that time. Cause I was, you know, I wasn't earning money acting. So I started working in kitchens um, and started, started from the, the bottom really to the, and, and work my way up to become a head chef after, Oh, I didn't know. So yeah, you haven't worked in the business. I didn't, didn't realize that. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And then, and then I, um, I became a head chef. Did that for a, a couple of years in London, and then moved to Manchester. And then I started working for an agency and did like consultancy stuff. And then you know they they'd send me out to places as a head chef and stuff like that. Um, but I sort of said to Stephen like the next the next idea I had for this short was setting the restaurant industry because you know i 
had witnessed and experienced so much stuff that was like, this is ripe for drama. You know what I mean? And I, I feel, I feel, I felt like <clears throat> it's never really been explored. Uh, I mean, it has obviously been explored, but f- for me, there's uh, movies out there that don't quite hit the mark, or you know, they're, they're sort of um, romanticized and yeah, so things like say, that. Yeah, so the romanticized kind of kitchens and yeah, you, you know, exactly. So I, I sort of wanted to 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 sort of show my what I'd been through, really, you know, and show it in it, it, its true light. And it's not the same in every kitchen, obviously. You know, there's other every kitchen is different, but certainly the ones that I'd worked in, that's what I'd experienced. So everything in the movie is is based on fact. Um, and I said to Stephen, you know, I've got this idea, and and he was like, well, what what do you plan? What do you want to do? Then he said, obviously, you need to get an agent if you want to start doing it properly. I was like, well, yeah, I do. I mean, I, yeah, I don't know where to start though. I need. You know, I can't really show them one short film. I mean, maybe I can, but he said, okay, well, so I, he ended up coming on board the boiling point of short. And then as soon as it was done, he was like, he sent it to his agency, his agent, uh, independent, uh, who and she loved it. She doesn't represent directors, but she's passed it on to somebody within the agency who does. And the next minute I get a phone call, which doesn't happen, apparently. <laughs> they don't phone you up. Yeah. <laughs> so my so Jago Irwin, who, who is who is now my agent, he um he called me up and was like, I've just watched Boiling Point, the short, uh, and I'd love to have a chat. Um, are you looking for an agent? I was like, Yeah, I am. <laughs> oh my god. I thought it was a prank call at first. Um and so I went there and met him and, and and we we hit it off and and that and that was it. We so you know, and then and then the same thing sort of has recently happened with the feature of Boiling Point. I um I I suddenly was getting because the film went out to the European film market back in March, um March this year. Yeah, <clears throat> we filmed it in March 2020. I'll tell you about that story in a minute. <laughs> but um yeah, so uh it went out to the European film market where it basically gets sold to all the distributors and stuff like that. And um. Next, I didn't realize, but like agencies and production companies are what uh, uh, were able to watch the film. So I get emails from like a bunch of American agents, and I'm like, "Is it what is going on here?" Like, and I didn't realize that they'd seen the film. So, 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 the, so then I had a meeting with a, with a couple of them, and uh, and ended up um, same sort of deal, same same sort of vibe with with um, with CAA um, out in out in America. And, Suddenly, I'm like rep by CAA and 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 independent, and I've done two features and a and a couple of shorts, you know. And I'm just like, it's mad. It's absolutely mad. Well, you say it's mad, but at the same time, I mean, you said that you kind of you picked it all up from from acting. Well, you just kind of you went from broke and you you filmed the film that was that was you couldn't have set yourself a bigger challenge than that in the first place. So it's kind of <laughs> yeah. just you've reaped your own wealth, really. Yeah, I mean, I I sort I sort of thought like. If I'm gonna do this, I felt like I was coming into it really late. You know, I want to, I want to do something bold, and 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 I'm always about like, you know, not um, thinking outside the box, basically. Yeah. And any project that I get now, any scripts that I get, I always look at it and go, okay, this is, this is, you know, how it's written. But what if we were to try this, and you know, maybe flip it on its head a little bit and try something new? <clears throat> it doesn't always work, obviously, but I feel like. Unless you try, you'll never know, you know. It, and it's and and I think I've always been a, I've always been a, an out 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 of the box thinker, and I think using that in, in my directing now is is you know I'm I'm, com- I'm more confident doing that now, um, mm. and I think that you know going forward that's the way I want to work, and and you know I'm confident with actors as well because I am an actor and and I, and I understand actors and, and and you know how they sort of think and 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 the fact that every actor is different and you need to you need to sort of understand them before you go on this process. You know, you're basically getting married or whatever, and you're going on this journey for a few months together and you're in each other's pockets and you're living together, not literally, but, you know, so you have to understand actors. Um, and I think that's one That's one of my, one of my strong points is, is actors, you know. Just slice three steaks, it's not hard. Why do you, you always give in to her, my man? What do you mean give in to her? What's your problem? Can somebody help me? Breathe through your nose, Alfie and I. 
You've gone down to a three. What do you mean? One from a five to a three star. Did you decide on the actors before finishing the script or did the script and kind of this idea of filming, filming the whole thing in one shot was that before you chose the actors? How did it all kind of come to fruition? Well, <clears throat> some of the actors we I brought back from the short, um, so they were already in, involved. And then um, other actors, uh, you know, as soon as Stephen comes on board, the, the set, he was in the short, obviously, but as soon as he came on board the feature, I mean, you know, we had the they had the pickings. Everybody wants to work with him, so you know, we 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 sort of put a, a casting call out for for a few different for various different roles on Spotlight, and um, we got like over I think it was over ten thousand submissions came in. I didn't see all of these submissions, but yeah. most of them I did. I think the people who were right for the role, the casting director Carol, and she whittled it down to it was eight hundred that I actually watched eight hundred tapes. <clears throat> for for a, like maybe six or seven different roles, and then the other roles, I uh, I said to Stephen like you know if you're the head chef in a restaurant, you would have employed all of your staff in the kitchen, so it was important that he had a say, or you know right. he certainly he had a, he had a hand in <clears throat> in, in giving me you know um, you know uh, actors to to look at and you know, suggestions and stuff like that. Or he would just say, we've got to get this guy or this girl in there. And obviously if Stephen Graham says that, you're not going to say no because he's got impeccable taste, you know. Um, and that was the case with Vanette Robinson, who plays Carly. Um, she was a Stephen suggestion. Um, and, you know, I'm th I thank thank God we we went with her because thank God she wanted to do it for, for one and, she, and, she, and she's done it. And it was like, yeah, she, and then she won the award for best act, uh, supporting actress. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, it was a, it was a, the the casting thing with me was, was was very important because not only did I want to get obviously the rights, I wanted it to be an eclectic mix of diversity and you know um, people from all different, not only from different parts of the UK but from different countries as well. You know, because that's what it's like in that world. Yeah. <clears throat> so different accents and different um, languages and stuff. And, you know, to get that right and then also um, to get actors who could be present in the moment and, yeah. and be able to be thrown something or, you know, be ready for, for anything that was to be to, to happen, you know. So, um, I mean, the script was uh, written solid, but the dialogue was was kind of like bullet points um, mm -hmm. and it was it was. Uh, within those bullet points was exactly what needed to be said in the conversation, but it wasn't um, set, you know, and yeah. then we workshopped it with the actors. <clears throat> so the actors improvised a lot. Um, not when we came to film, filming was pretty set, but prior to that, you know, the rehearsals and the, and the workshops was all, was all, we were open for, I was open for discussion and it was, you know, it was a, it was a, com a complete collaboration between everybody really. Yeah. It was a lot I mean, of fun. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously the, the actors, is, is, it's crucial for this to work, this kind of film. But um, a lot, of, I mean, there's not a lot of uh, one-shot films out there, but the ones that I have seen, a lot of them, I'm not going to name any names, but there's quite a few you kind of, you know, it's, it either feels like a gimmick or you yeah. just, you kind of know that the actors know that the camera's there and you know the camera's there. So, I mean, you've got a, fan, you've got a fantastic DOP. I think he's only 20, 23, 24, year, 24 <laughs> years old. Did he a was, yeah, when we shot it. Him and the actors and obviously your direction. How did I mean? You must have really kind of been second guessing yourself before you went into it. So how did yeah. you approach that? Well, that was one of the first things we said when 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 we decided we were going to do the feature in one take because the short was one take, <clears throat> but that's that's twenty minutes. You know, it's I don't want to say it's easy because it's not easy, but it's easier. <laughs> um, and when we decided we were going to do this, the feature in one take, like exactly what you said there, there's not that many of them really. You know, true one take films. You know, there's a lot. There's a few movies that have been um, edited to look like uh, one take. But um, first of all, we had to see whether it could definitely be done. And so the the type of camera that we were going to use, we had to we tested a few different cameras, and the one that was the the one we used was a Sony Venice camera, um, because that was a we were able to shoot at a really high um, uh, format, six K we shot at, and then. <clears throat> that's the one of the only cameras that you can live swap the SD cards. So, right. so, so you could continually shoot. 
um, and swap, keep swapping out the SD cards and they go onto the next card. And then you take that one out, put a new one in, go it flip back. And, and so you could, you could shoot for, for hours without stopping really with that camera. Cause the, you could do the same with the batteries as well. <clears throat> so once we knew that was the case, we were like, okay, this is definitely going to work. We're definitely going to be able to do it in one take, you know? Um, and then, and then the sort of, we we def- we didn't want it to be the re- the reason why I did it in one take is not because I wanted to be clever and you know and, and let's let, let's show everyone out how 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 clever we are but it was because you know l- l- when you're in a busy restaurant service it is one take you don't yeah. get chance to to sort of stop over and, and spend ten minutes over here with you, with your mate or you know you say how are you getting on or you know let's go and have a chat it's just full on like you know it's just full on and and i wanted to i wanted to immerse the audience in that and make them go on a journey as if they were part of the 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 you know the 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 staff really and just just like a voyeur so so that was one of the main reasons um for doing it and also you know i feel like i didn't want the audience to sort of i wanted to i wanted them to to have to just keep watching it and not take their eyes off the screen you know and, and constantly on the edge of the seat because you know it's not a it, i suppose it is a, it is a thriller in a way but but it's not like your typical action-packed thriller um yeah no that, that, that i think that was that's that's kind of like the real draw no for this, for this film is it doesn't you just you see this picture of, of steven's on the front as a chef and you just don't imagine that it could be so tense and so like a thriller <laughs> and you sit you sit yeah. down and it just it just blows you away from from the start to finish yeah yeah well thank you i appreciate that you know because it, it it's you know it was a it was a it was a challenge i'm not going to lie that the one take thing was a challenge and <clears throat> we obviously had we were supposed to do it eight times eight, uh, so we, we would yeah. have had eight films yeah we we had four we, we got shut down after the second uh night um and we had we did it we did it four times and two of them were basically rehearsals really because right. when we would when we did the first two we didn't know that we were going to be shutting down the next day at that point until late, late that night. Um, and so I was thinking, okay, we've got six more goes at this. We're going to definitely get the the, the right take, you know, but, um, but we did, you know, we, we, we got it. And the, the third take is the one that we've used. And, and um, there was a few little technical things that we had to iron out in post, like just some shadows and things like that. But, but yeah, I mean, you know, it was a hell of a ride and, it was crazy to be honest with you, but uh, but a lot of fun. And I think going forward, I'm going to bring that sort of not 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 necessarily doing every film in one take. I'm I'm not. There's no way I'll do that. But but certainly having like long drawn out takes mm-hmm. because because not. I think you know you can you, you do draw the audience in, um, but also <clears throat> it's fantastic for actors to just play and just yeah. you know. And just give them that that chance rather than going, oh, you know, you've got to cut and do five different angles on the same, uh, the same, the same uh, scene. But so yeah, I mean, it's it was it was yeah, it was a challenge. But I mean, yeah. with, you know, with the films coming out and and it's just uh, it's yeah, it's blown my mind how, how how it's been received really. Just just give me a minute. Give me a minute. I've just got so much going on. I've been living out of a suitcase for the past two months. I don't know how you juggle both this and life. No, I don't know what to do. I just want to stop. We'll get through it. It's obviously, I mean, obviously the film's great itself, but it obviously must have worked uh, in your favour that Venom, the second Venom film came out pretty much at the same time that this release as well, no? Yeah. Well, because it's funny because we, we, um, we were originally going to shoot this in April 2020. And Stephen uh, had just come off Venom, and then um, he was going on to do something else uh, straight away. But then that got put back, so he was like, Th- "That shoot is now going to be in April, so we need to bring ours forward to March, 2020." Mm-hmm. And thank God we did, because if we hadn't have done that, we wouldn't have had a film because we wouldn't have been able to, you know, because April we were, everyone was in lockdown. Yeah. And and you know even the dates we just picked a random date out of, out of a hat like for the, for the shoot week and that was the 18th of uh, March. And so, you know, if we'd have picked it the week after it, we wouldn't have had a film. <laughs> and oh, yeah. it's just you know all those things are just you look back and go wow. 
something. Someone was looking down on me. I think it was me mum. Thanks for coming. Let's make some chips, yeah? Chop some spuds. Yes, sir. Thank you. Enjoy drinks. Thank you. Service on table 20. Talk, talking about um, COVID, um, have you been able, I mean, I imagine it's given you plenty of time to, to kind of not just wrap your head, I mean, that, I suppose it's difficult to wrap your head around what's happening because this film's kind of become popular and you could have kind of been at home, no? But at the same time, yeah. it's given you time to kind of wrap your, wrap your head around what you'd like to do next, no? Yeah, yeah, I've, 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 got a, I've got a bunch of things happening. You know, COVID's been, I mean, look, I, I'm always a, quite a positive thinker, so COVID has been a, a good time for me to sort of go, okay, let's develop some stuff. Let's think about what I want to do next and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, having time to, to read some scripts and stuff. And, and, and in the summer, just gone, I just did my first TV um, gig as, as a director. So I, I directed the last episode of a, of a BBC One drama over here called uh, the the responder which is coming out in january i think right, um, yeah, I mean, with Mar yeah, martin freeman you act in that as well no? you, you act in that yeah I, I, yes i had a small part in it as well which is bizarre um but i mean it, yeah i didn't i didn't cast myself in it it was uh, <laughs> I, the producer sort of gave me this role and then they asked me if i wanted to, to direct the uh, the last episode which was an amazing experience you know so that was that was my summer uh, doing that and then and then, yeah, I'm starting prep on a new movie in January. Um, and we shoot that in Feb through to March, end of March. And then, um, and then, and then uh, there's another couple of things lined up after that. Um, yeah, yeah it's I've, just, it's I've read, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know how much this, this is true. It's off IMDb, so I can, I just, I can yeah. never trust it. But I think one, yeah. you've got a comedy, you've got a comedy film coming up, another last drop. And then also a third yeah. call. The, so so accused, of, is, accused is the one that I'm doing next. Um, right. That's the like one I'm doing next. Witch hunt, no, something like that. I'm on, I'm yes, yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah, exactly. It's a really, it's a, it will be a very intense uh, thriller. It's very uh, sort of realistic in terms of its themes and stuff like that. And it's about online social media and 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 you know what that can do uh, in mm -hmm. the wrong hands, sort of thing. And yeah. um, and then the last drop is is a is a movie. It says it's a comedy on IMDb, but it's not. It's 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 a it's a romantic drama, really, but so it's it's not. I mean, I suppose it's got elements of funny moments in there, but the funny moments come from the sort of reality and the truth of what what it's about. Um, yeah. And we're just in talks with with two actors for that at the moment, which are which is very exciting. Um, and so yeah, so that could be. Both the UK productions, or is that something that you kind of? No, so 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 the the accused is is um is basically i my product my production company um right. and vertigo uh are doing that together um and then the last drop is is an american thing but it's actually <clears throat> we're just doing a rewrite on it at the moment to set it in london it was originally set in in uh, los angeles but we're now setting it in london so myself and james cummings who i wrote boiling point with are doing a rewrite on it and oh. um and uh but that's uh, a company called um 21 laps entertainment right. who they've done lots loads of amazing stuff like um uh oh, what's that netflix show the 80s uh uh stranger things stranger yeah things. All right. they, All they, right. they've done loads of stuff like that yeah so <clears throat> they're great really great guys and and yeah and, and there's another film i'm doing in, in potentially next year with uh with another actor i can't i can't say who it is but um is. Yeah, I know. It's sorry, but it's um. No, no, I understand completely. Yeah, I, yeah, but um, but that's an exciting, another exciting one, really. <clears throat> oh, really, um, so it's all it's all panning out really well for you. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's gone. It's honestly, I'm I'm just so grateful at the minute because it's like I, I just I know how how difficult it is to to get stuff off the ground and you know to how to make stuff and 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 sort of you know you know make, do do something in this industry as, as a director or as anything really. Um, so I'm just. Yeah, I'm really, uh, really thankful. It's a great, uh, great story, and I mean, you, you well deserved as well because the film's fantastic. Thanks, so, man. Uh, Thank you. So um, I really appreciate your time, especially so close to Christmas. So uh, I know everyone's busy. Yeah, no, honestly, so it's been, been great. Thank and you. I wish you the best of luck with the film when it comes out. And I, uh, I hope to be able to speak to you about uh, one of these uh, films that you got coming out. To yeah, soon definitely. Yeah, definitely, Brilliant. definitely. Well, thanks so much for your time. Have a great Christmas, and I'll be speaking. Yeah, to you too. All right. Definitely. Thanks, man. All right. Take care then. All the best. Take care. This is your fault. You don't turn no, up no, on no, time. No, no, you don't no, do no, the no. audience. You come in sneaking a food. No.